All right, folks, so this is the second video on how to classify fingerprints as loops. Uh, in the first video, we talked about the three essential elements of fingerprint patterns uh, when it comes to them being classified as loops. We talked about the fact that loops have to have a sufficient recurve, they have to have a delta, and they have to have a ridge count. And so you should now be able to look at a fingerprint and determine whether or not that fingerprint is a loop or not by looking for those three essential elements. What we need to talk about now, though, is once you've identified a fingerprint as a loop, now how do we figure out whether or not that loop is a radial loop or an ulnar loop? What we talked about in the previous videos, we talked about fingerprints as either being left slanted or right slanted. So for example, looking at these two fingerprints here, I can see that the one on the left is a left slanted loop because I can see that the ridges flow in from the left side and they flow out the left side after they recurve. And I can see the fingerprint on the right here is a right slanting loop in that it fingerprint ridges flow in from the right, recurve and flow out from the right. But then the question is, are these two fingerprints radial loops? Are they ulnar loops? Is one radial or one ulnar? We need to figure that out. Now the names radial and ulnar loops are actually derived from the fact that we have two different bones in our forearm. One bone is called the radius and the other is called the ulna. Um, and so that's going to help us determine whether or not a loop is radial or ulnar by which direction the loop is uh, uh, recurving towards. Is it recurving towards the radius or is it recurving towards the ulna? Most, uln, uh, most loops are actually ulnar. When we look at the recurving ridges, most of them are going to recurve towards the ulna bone and so they're going to be ulnar. In fact, 94% of loops are ulnar. Only about 6% of loops are radial. If you remember earlier, we talked about the fact that loops, um, about 65% of all fingerprints are loops. And since 94% of all loops are ulnar, that means that the majority of fingerprints uh, are actually ulnar loops. That's the most common fingerprint pattern you're going to come across. You will come across radial loops sometimes, though, so we do need to understand the difference between radial and ulnar loops. When we look closely uh, at an x-ray of the forearm, we can see the two bones I was mentioning earlier. The radius bone is the one that's on the, the thumb side, or the innermost portion of the forearm. So here we see the thumb on our hand. So the radius bone is this one here on the inside of the forearm. And then the ulna is the bone on the outside of the forearm. So whenever we have a fingerprint, we're trying to figure out is the fingerprint pattern, is it slanting towards the, the radius or towards the ulna? If the ridges are recurving and slanting towards the radius, it's a radial loop. If the fingerprint ridges are recurving and slanting towards the ulna bone, then we would call it an ulnar loop. So how do we figure that out? Well, if we have a fingerprint, uh, one of the easiest ways to figure out if it's looping towards the, the radius bone or the ulnar bone, or ulna bone rather, is to actually hold your hand directly above the print. Um, when a loop enters and exits from the thumb side of the hand, the pattern will always be a radial loop. When a loop enters and exits from the pinky finger side, the pattern will always be an ulnar loop, and there are no exceptions to this rule. So if we're looking at a fingerprint, and we know for sure that that fingerprint came from the right hand, if we simply hold our right hand above the fingerprint with the palm side down, and if we observe whether or not the ridges recurve towards the pinky or recurve towards the thumb, we can differentiate radial versus ulnar loop. So looking at our example here, Let's look at this fingerprint here. Let's say we know for sure that it came from the right middle finger. All right, so if we hold our right hand up directly above the print, again, palm side down, so I mean our, left, our thumb would be to the left, we can see that the ridges flow in from the right hand side or the pinky side. They recurve and they flow out towards the pinky side. Well, we know that the ulna bone is on the pinky side of the forearm, so that means these ridges are flowing towards the ulna, so they're flowing towards the pinky, so we know that this fingerprint is an ulnar loop, which is the more common one. But let's look at this fingerprint, this one that came from the right index finger. Notice this one, on the other hand, the ridges are flowing in from the left side, or the side with the thumb. So they're flowing in from the thumb side, they're recurving around, and they're flowing out towards the thumb side. So since these ridges are flowing towards the thumb side, where the radial bone is, then we would say that this is a radial loop. Let's look at the one on the thumb here. We can see that the ridges are flowing in from the right side, which is where the pinky is. They're flowing in from the pinky side, and they're flowing out towards the pinky side. Remember that the pinky side, that's where the ulna bone is located. So we would say that this is an ulnar loop. 
So in this hand, we can see that the right thumb is an ulnar loop. The right index finger is a radial loop. The middle finger is an ulnar loop. The right ring finger, notice this one's going towards the thumb, so this is a radial loop. And then on the right pinky, we can see that this is an ulnar loop. So notice on one person's hand, they can have multiple different fingerprint patterns. So even though all five of these fingerprints are loops, three of them are ulnar loops and two of them are radial loops. So let's look at this fingerprint here. So let's assume we know for sure that this fingerprint came from the right ring finger. Let's say we've rolled this fingerprint on a fingerprint card. We know for sure this is the right ring finger. So first of all, is this a loop? Well, let's look for the, the qualifications of the loop. We're looking for an innermost recurve. So here we have a good recurve here. Here we have type line and type line. So we have a delta. If we were to draw an imaginary line between the core and the delta, we definitely have a ridge count. So this is definitely a loop. So then the question is, what type of loop is it? Well, as I mentioned before, let's assume we know for sure that this fingerprint came from the right ring finger. Well, if we hold our right hand above the fingerprint, again with the palm side down, we can see that the ridges are flowing in from the right side, which is where our pinky is. They're recurving around going out towards the right side. So since it's flowing towards the pinky side, which is where the ulna is, this fingerprint is definitely an ulnar loop. All right, what about these two fingerprints? Let's look at the fingerprint here on the left. Is this fingerprint on the left a radial or an ulnar loop? Well, what do we need to know first before we figure out if it's a radial or ulnar loop? Well, we need to know for sure that it's a loop. And certainly we can go through our steps. We can see that there's a recurve here. So here's our core. We have a type line and a type line. So here's our delta. If we draw an imaginary line between the core and the delta, we definitely have a ridge count. So this is definitely a loop. But before we figure out if it's radial or ulnar, what is the other question we have to answer? The question, of course, is what hand is this fingerprint from? Well, let's say that this fingerprint comes from the left hand. right? Now, this is a left slanted loop. We can see that the, the ridges flow in from the left and flow out from the left. Now, is this fingerprint ulnar or radial? Well, the way we figure that out is we take our palm, our hand rather, and we hold our hand directly above the fingerprint with the palm side down, right? So we can see if I hold my hand directly above the fingerprint with the palm side down, we can see that the ridges flow in from the pinky side. They recurve around, they flow out the pinky side. Well, what bone is on the pinky side? Well, we know on the pinky side of the arm is the ulna bone. So if this fingerprint came from the left hand, this is definitely an ulnar loop. Well, what about this fingerprint? Is this fingerprint an ulnar or radial loop? Well, again, the question we have to find out is, what hand is it from? Well, let's say we know for sure that this one came from the left thumb. All right. So if this is from the left thumb, to figure out if it's ulnar or radial, I hold my left hand directly above the print. Again, palm side down. I can see that the ridges, this time we have a right slanting loop. Again, if I hold my left hand above the, the, the fingerprint, I can see that the ridges flow in from the thumb side, recurve around and flow out the thumb side. And so if this fingerprint came from the thumb, left thumb, this is definitely a uh, radial loop because it flows in and out the thumb side. So even though we have a left slanting and a right slanting fingerprint, if we have a left slanting fingerprint on the left hand, it's ulnar. If we have a right slanting fingerprint on the left hand, it's a radial loop. So it's important we answer that question, what hand is it from? If we don't know, let's say we find a fingerprint at a crime scene. We dust it with latent fingerprint powder. We find the fingerprint. We lift it. And we're trying to figure out if it's radial or ulnar. Until we know for sure if it's from the suspect's right hand or left hand, we can't say for sure if it's radial or ulnar. All we can say is that it's a loop, and it's either a left slanting or right slanting loop. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some notation on fingerprint cards. If we have a known fingerprint card from a suspect, we're going to classify the fingerprints on that card. And when we classify the fingerprints on that card, we're actually going to write on the card a little bit of notation indicating the classification of each print. When we're classifying uh, the, the pattern type, arch, loop, whirl, we write uh, either a, a dash or a letter of some sort underneath the fingerprint indicating its type. When it's an ulnar loop, what we do is directly underneath the fingerprint, we, we do a slash indicating an ulnar loop. So notice all of these fingerprints are right slanting loops. And since all of these fingerprints come from the right hand, on a fingerprint card, this one in the top left would be finger number one, which is the right thumb. 
finger number two would be the right index finger, finger number three would be the right ring, sorry, right middle finger, finger number four would be the right ring finger, this would be the right pinky finger or finger number five. Now the next row would be from the left hand, and this fingerprint would be fingerprint number six, which is the left thumb. This is finger number seven, which is the left index finger. This is the left middle finger, finger eight. This is the left ring finger, finger nine. And this is finger number 10, the left pinky. So let's look at the right hand. Remember, all these fingerprints come from the right hand. This would be the thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky. Notice all of these are loops. All of them are right slanted loops, which means that they all slant towards the pinky. So that means that they're all ulnar loops. So to indicate ulnar loops, we put this slash, this little the slant line below each one. Now notice these ones. This is from the left hand. Now since all of these are left slanting loops, which means they all go again towards the pinky, we would put these slants underneath them, these, these lines indicating that these are ulnar loops. Now what if the, the loops are not ulnar? What if they're radial? For example, let's look at these fingerprints. So remember, the top five prints are all from the right hand. So that would mean this is the right thumb, this is the right index finger, right middle finger. Notice the right index finger. This is a loop, so we have a recurve, we have a delta, we have a ridge count. But notice that this, though, this fingerprint, the ridges, if I hold my right hand above that fingerprint, the ridges flow in from the thumb side and flow out the thumb side. So they actually flow towards the radial bone, or the radius rather. And so this is a radial loop. So notice instead of putting a slash underneath here, notice how we write the letter R underneath there. In the index fingers, we would actually write a capital R if it's a radial loop on some other finger. So for example, we can see the right ring finger is also a radial loop. We would use a lowercase r. And we'll talk about that, why we do that a little bit later when we talk about the Henry system of classification. But if it's a, so just remember for now, if it's an ulnar loop, we do a slash, but if it's a radial loop, we write the letter R underneath it. So let's look at a fingerprint uh, card that's been classified. Uh, so notice that each of the fingerprints on the right hand are all uh, ulnar loops. So we can see that the right thumb, again, finger number one, is an ulnar loop, so we have the slash underneath it. The fingerprint number two, which is the right index finger, is also an ulnar loop. So you can actually see that all ten of these fingerprints are actually ulnar loops. Now the question you might ask is, what is this number in the top right-hand corner of the, of the box? Well, this number in the top right-hand corner is actually the ridge count. So when the examiner was determining the classification of each fingerprint, they actually counted the number of ridges uh, when you drew that imaginary line between the core and the and the delta and actually wrote that in there because this is going to be important later on when we do Henry classification. So we can see that the right thumb, we can see that the ridges flow in from the pinky side, they flow out the pinky side, so they flow towards the ulna. So this is an ulnar loop, hence the slash. And if we were to draw an imaginary line between the delta, which is right here, and the core, it actually crosses seven lines, seven ridges, so it has a ridge count of seven. So uh, an additional part of the notation for classification is to write the ridge count whenever we have um, uh, loops. Looking at this fingerprint, we can see uh, some other markings. Uh, we can see, for example, that the right thumb, this is not even a, a, a loop. This is actually a whorl. So the examiner's wrote a W here indicating it's a whorl. Notice the right index finger. This isn't an, an ulnar loop. Uh, we know that because we can see the slash here. Notice the number 21 here. That tells us that if we were to draw an imaginary line between the delta and between the core, we would it would cross 21 ridges, so it has a ridge count of 21. We can see that the right ring finger, finger number four here, is also an ulnar loop, and it has a ridge count of 22. Notice down here, though, notice the left index finger. Uh, this is a loop, but notice it's not an ulnar loop. It doesn't have the slash. Notice it has the R, so this is actually a radial loop. And then also notice the ridge count. Notice it's 56. There, there are not actually 56 ridges between the, the delta and the core here. Actually, there's six. Uh, whenever we have a radial loop, whenever we count the ridges, we always add 50 to the number. And that is a quick uh, indicator that we have a radial loop. Um, so we can see that the ridges flow in from, uh, again, this is the left hand. So if we hold our left hand above it, we can see the ridges flow in from the thumb side and flow out the thumb side. So that's why this is a radial loop. But if we were to draw an imaginary line between the delta and the core, we would see that that crosses six ridges. 
So we'd actually write 56 as the rich count because we would take this, the rich count of 6 and add a 50 to it because this is a radial loop. We're going to talk more about that later so that you understand why we do that. But for now, if you're doing a ridge count and you have a radial loop, count the number of ridges and then add 50 to it. So if you had a, a fingerprint that had a ridge count of 10 and it was a radial loop, you would actually write the ridge count as 60 here in the right-hand corner. All right, so now you know how to differentiate between radial and ulnar loops, and you also know how to do the notation on the fingerprint card when you do the classification in terms of using the slashes for ulnar loops or writing R's when you have radial loops and how to write in the ridge counts as well.